Hi, my name is Stefan Yakovlevich, and I'm going to be showing how I write my notes using VimWiki. VimWiki is a NeoVim plugin that lets you write notes, has everything from links to to-do lists, and the most important feature is that it transfers everything to HTML very quickly. And that's how I go from just a simple project like this to something that's hosted on my website that has interactive buttons and that has all my notes that I need for the week on it. This is incredibly useful for me because I could access my notes from anywhere and it's very, very fast. It does not take a lot of time to set up. And today I'm just going to be going through a whole process showing how I started this and how effective this could be for your note taking as well. This is, of course, isn't limited to just computer science majors or college students in general, but it's just a very easy way of taking notes if you have some experience with Vim. And this isn't going to be necessarily a tutorial on how to make a website or anything like that. I'm going to assume that you know how to do that, and if you don't, there's plenty of YouTube videos that can help with this. Me, I'm just going to show how I implemented VimWiki into my website, and also how I write the notes so fast. The most important thing for me when writing notes in VimWiki are the snippets, and I made these snippets myself. So one very useful snippet I have is to create a new directory, and I'm just going to name this video. And I'll go over how this syntax all works, but I just want to show an example. Like this, I could open a new directory, and I have another snippet to link back to home. And just like that, I very quickly established a link between the two notes and I could easily access between the two files. This is very different from other types of note taking methods that I've seen. Of course, when I first started, I tried writing on paper my notes for college, but this was very hard. And also Word and PowerPoint are just not helpful for me. So now I'm going to show how I made these snippets, how they actually work and how you could use them. Keep in mind, I'm gonna make a GitHub repository that's gonna have all these snippets in it. I'm just gonna put in my um, Lua snip file. And in this file is the configuration for all the snippets. And of course, feel free to add to them or just to use them for your own good. So here's my Lua snip file. I just specify um, what the configurations are and I have LST equal require Lua snip. S is for snippet mode, text mode is T, I is insert mode, and F is function mode. I'll go over all those things um, when we get to them. Here I have a few functions that I use to get the file paths when uh, creating a new file or using the back button, which I'll show later. And then here are the actual snippets a little below that. One important one is the div snippet, which creates a div. So here I have the div snippet open. As you can see, it's named div and it's divided into two text modes and one insert mode. The text modes just specify how a div should look. And this can be found in the documentation. It's just four hyphens, space, four hyphens. And then I use the insert mode here to write the actual thing that I want to write. And I'm going to show how this looks in actual VimWiki. So if I open VimWiki and I write div, it turns out exactly how I want. And I just write whatever I want in that space. And this is where the benefit of snippets really start to show. Another one that I have that I use all the time is the home snippet. As I showed previously, I just type in home and then it immediately gives me back the link to the home directory. The create new directory snippets a little more complicated because it involves a function and that's the function that I talked about in the beginning. This add direct function is maybe a little bit complicated, but it just returns the directory that's needed to make the create new file work. And the most important thing about this snippet is it creates a tree format. So when you want to create a new directory, it makes a new folder inside of the current directory. And that's how I have everything organized. So it's a tree of the things that I want. And just to show how that looks, I have inside of the index, I have school and then inside of school, I have the school year and then inside of the school year, I have all the different classes that I'm taking. And again, this is all done very, very quickly with uh, the create new directory. As you could see, it already creates the slash school slash 2023. And all I need to add is the file name. So here I'll just write new file. And then this name part is the part that's being shown in the actual HTML. So it doesn't show the whole link. Rather, it just shows the name that is specified here. So I just write new file. And now I could quickly show how this HTML would look if I run the command vim wiki alt HTML. And now once I open up the HTML, you could see the new file button there. Obviously, there's a little bit of CSS going on because um, it looks very dull with just the default settings. I could also put in the GitHub repository the CSS that I use. Although it's not perfect, it just works for me and I could use this all on my phone, which is very useful. Now how I actually get this into my website, I'll talk about later in the video because that part is a little more confusing and it takes a little more time to actually configure.
But like I said, in the GitHub repository, all of these snippets are going to be there. And please add your own snippets to make your workflow go even faster. As of right now, this is all a work in progress. And um, I don't think I have everything set up exactly how I want. And maybe in a month or two, I can make another video and show how it would look by then. So I'm going to show a basic Vim wiki file. And this is obviously going to be using the snippet. So it's going to go by a lot quicker. So inside of the video file that I made, I'm going to um, use my coming soon. I wrote this, so just in case when everything transfers to HTML, there's no blank screen or error showing up, but instead you see a coming soon page. But once we delete that, we could actually start writing the things that we wanna write. So I'm gonna create a div and I'm combining these snippets. So then I'd add the create new and into here, I could just say folder one and then show this as folder one. Once that's created, we could go into it and we could again write home. And then I'm gonna show how the back button works. The back button is an absolute path, but when it's all converted into HTML, it becomes uh, it becomes a relative path and it's not as complicated as it looks. The function for this is going to be in the GitHub repository. And the reason I need to insert something again is because um, it can find the video folder, but it cannot find the video file. So once I add the video file and click back, it takes you back to the exact file you were at. I could just name this just to make sure there's no confusion. So this is video. And right here is and right here is folder one. So as you could see, you could go back and forth between these with the back button, and you could also go back home, back to video. And now you might start seeing what I'm talking about. This goes very fast, and you could quickly move between notes. Inside folder one, I can make a header, so I use H3 for that, and I could say here is the new header. And at this point, I would make another div and write this is a new file to show for a video obviously i'm just writing random things here but i just want you guys to understand how this all works then i can send this all to html and now inside of the html i can open a video and i can open a folder one and everything is just the way i want it to look now, obviously this was just an example i'm now going to show how i write real notes for my chemistry class so when i want to start my notes the first thing i do is i go to my school folder and like i said this is going to be for my chemistry lecture and then I go to my notes folder and in here, I'm going to make a new directory um, that is named example. And this is the folder example. And then it duplicates the same name for it to be the example dot wiki file. And then I'm just going to name this example. I'm going to open this. And as you can see on my screen, I have the notes open. And usually when I'm taking notes, I I'm in the lecture room. So I have the big PowerPoint showing on the screen. The only thing that I really want from the PowerPoint are the images and to get the images very quickly. Um, I found this little trick. If you convert this to a zip file and you extract it using, for instance, I'm on Mac. So I use the, the unarchiver. And once I have this open, I go to PowerPoint, I go to media, and then here are all the images that are inside of the PowerPoint. I just recently found out about this trick and it's incredibly useful for the notes that I'm going to take. So since everything's going to be moved into uh, my website, I need to have, I need to have the images that I want inside the actual directory that my project's in. So once I have this project open, I go into the public folder, which is, which is where I hold my Vim wiki files. I go into the Vim wiki folder and then I just follow the path of the notes that I'm currently taking. So I'd go into school 2023 chem lecture notes. And that's where I'd find the example folder that I'm working in. And then in here, I'm going to make a folder named media. This is just how I find it's most useful to do this. And then obviously I'd rename the zip file back into a PowerPoint file so I could open it. And like I said, I wouldn't actually open the project on my computer, but for example purposes, I'll do that since this is a chemistry class. Don't pay attention to the actual notes. The important thing is how I write the notes. So the first thing I do is create the home directory. I make a home directory in every single file just because for me, it's easier that way. And then I'd make a back folder with the name notes to match the notes folder that's before it. And this obviously goes back to the notes.wiki file. And in here, I'd make a header with H3 and I'd name it notes for, and then I have another shortcut for date. I'd create a div to separate each chapter that I'm doing. And then I'd get the title of the notes that I'm working on here. I'm just going to name it extensive and intensive properties because that's just the only notes that I'm going to be writing for this. And I also have Git copilot set up. So even if I need to copy the notes, I don't necessarily have to because Git copilot would just find the information on the thing that I'm writing about. Now, obviously this window is really small, but if I zoom it out, you could see that GitHub does a pretty good job of giving me a definition of the thing I want. And a really important part of my notes is images. So I'd want to add an image of this. 
and I'll just use one of the images on the screen. So I do image large. And this is another uh, function that I have implemented that can style a picture to match how I'd want it to look in an HTML file. And here the local command uses a relative directory. So I'm just going to do media slash, and then I'm going to choose the image that I want that matches the image on the PowerPoint. And that would be image three. So I'd put image three into the media folder. And then I'd go back into here and write image three dot JPEG. And if I was to convert all of this to HTML, it would look like this exactly how I'd want it to look. So with the help of Git Copilot, I could really start writing these notes very fast. I just went on another page and I'm just going to do the same thing basically. And here I'm just going to copy what's on the screen. So I have a bold snippet that makes text bold and I'm just going to write for length. And as you can see, Copilot automatically writes what should be written. And then I could do the same thing for volume. I'm just going to use the bold command and write in here for volume and then copilot is automatically going to know what to write so that way i could quickly write my notes and let's say i want to add the picture too i could write here is a table that shows this and then here i add the image large quickly switch back over to the finder and find the picture that i want and then here i would just add the name of the image you could rename these to your liking i'm just trying to do this as fast as possible and then send this all to HTML. And then once you refresh, here are how your notes will look. Again, this is all very fast and it looks pretty good for it being all automatically done. And I'd keep going like this till the end of the lecture and I could keep up with the lecture speed like this and include every image or note that I'd want. And then other very important things are superscript and subscript that I added. These are very important in chemistry. So I could do one centimeter is equal to and then write superscript and then I do 10 to the negative three meters. And then if I were to send this to HTML, it would look exactly as how you would imagine. BimWiki also has a lot of math formulas that you could add, and I'm going to in the future add snippets for those two. But currently I'm not doing any type of calculus, so I don't need to add any of these formulas. And that's basically how my notes look. If I go into an actual example that I wrote, week four is a good example. I have everything written out and the pictures are in there and everything how it need to be for me to actually consider them serious notes. And not only that, a good replacement for any type of other note taking methods I, I used to do. Now the only thing left is taking these HTML files and setting them into your actual website. The first step that's very important is configuring a path that you'd want for when you create the index file, which is the most important file for the Vim wiki as it's the main file. And then after that, I configure the remaining files based on that directory of that index file. This is the directory for the index file. And likewise, you need to specify a path HTML for this too. Both of these are inside of the folder called my website, where obviously my website is Now, as you might've seen, these are in the public directory because that is just how I set it up. Maybe this is not the most efficient method method, but it works for me. And then after this point, everything is done automatically as if they are in the public file, the HTML should look exactly how it should. And the Vim wiki should just sit there and it's not really doing much. The important thing is how to turn this HTML into a react component for that. I just used an iframe and uh, again, this might not be ideal, but this is just the way I found to do it. And it works. And then obviously these are connected to a GitHub repository. So I do git add, I'd commit this. And then of course I'd push for me to run this on the domain of my choice. I'm using AWS and Amplify automatically checks your GitHub repository and builds and deploys this onto the domain that you want. So if I go onto the domain and I go into Vim notes after I log in, it's exactly how I'd want it to look. And at this point I could open up these notes on my phone, on my laptop, any laptop, as long as I know the login, I should be good to go. And like this, I can write my notes fast and have easy access to them wherever I am. Now, like I said, this is a work in progress. There's still a lot for me to do, but this is just the general concept of what I'm trying to accomplish. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me them. And I hope this helped and give you inspiration for new ways of writing notes. And also remember, if you want to try doing this, I'd recommend looking at a lots of YouTube videos and also look at the GitHub repository for my Lewis snips. So that will give you a good starting point. And then after that, it should be good. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.